Hello, neighbors, and welcome or welcome back to the neighborhood. I'm Squealer D, and I am back again. And this time, neighbors, we are edited down and ready to go on Amy Marion's unschooling video that she put out on Monday. It also includes her hurricane prep, which is ridiculous. But let's jump into this and see what the homeschooling guru has to say. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. It is Monday. Happy Monday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. My morning is going fantastic. Can you see the sun? We've got that hurt. Can you see the sun? Yeah, Amy, it's called daytime. That's when the sun comes out. So this dress is the same dress that she has on in her Psalms video, which is her Saturday preachy video, the last two Saturdays. So seven days ago and then today she posted a video with this dress on because she recorded them both at the same time right before she recorded this video talking about unschooling just so everybody's not confused amy you're not tricking anybody you are doing multiple videos in one day so that you only have to film a couple times a week because now you're too lazy to even film six days a week good job Hurricane coming in, so it'll be our first hurricane here in Florida. We should be all good. Our area is not affected specifically at all. We are completely out. Amy, just because it might not hit you does not mean that you do not prepare. Because the one time you do not prepare is the one time it hits you. And you are putting all of your fellow Floridians at risk by not actually preparing. We are about to watch you be as nonsensical about this hurricane as you are about schooling your children and it needs to stop. Your whole life needs to change and you are the only person that can make that change. Out of it, uh, lots, of, lots of means to be able to be um, safe and everything. So I'm gonna just continue filming. Amy, do you even know what it means to be safe in a hurricane? Have you even looked it up? Or did you just count on Greg to take care of that also, like the inspection for the house? the week and we'll see how the week goes but today it's a sunny day I was like I got to come sit outside and swim in my pool every day Saturday and Sunday and then I just pulled up it's a pool Amy it's outside your house congratulations you act like it's a some kind of contest for you to go actually swim in your pool you had a pool in the mountains you have a pool here do you need a round of applause it's not exercise. We can see clearly you're not exercising. We can see clearly you're not taking care of your skin wearing your $100 face cream that you hawked. Our food out of the fridge that I made, and then as kids wanted food, we heated it up and we ate it. A lot of it I put in crock pots. So she, the day of, I figured it out. I was so confused on how they heat up food. She just puts it in the crock pot in all those little bags, heats it up, and they just eat out of it all day long like animals. It's like a pig trough, right, Amy? And just heat it up so like after after church, and that worked out so, so great. So favorite was the, the steak with the um, pierogies and the green peppers, that was really- So the favorite was the steak with the pierogies and the green peppers, but I'll bet you that it didn't all get eaten. Really good. The chicken, the Hawaiian chicken, I don't, it was okay. Didn't know if we loved it. Probably, I don't know if I just don't love chicken anymore or what, but it was okay. This lady said the Hawaiian chicken was okay. She didn't love it. That's because, go back to the video where you marinated it, Amy, and it was disgusting. It was enough to make people want to puke. Your preparation of that chicken was not good. So how could the food be good? Think about it, Amy. You prepared it and then cooked it on a grill that you don't know how to use. Tell me how any of it was going to be good, please. Okay, I mean, they ate it, but it wasn't like ultimate favorite. And you're talking about you don't like chicken, but you eat chicken nuggets, chicken sandwiches, chicken strips all day long. Lady, you don't know what you're talking about. And then by the end of last night, I went in there and I'm like, oh, we ate up all of our food. That's a good thing. So that means I'm going to need to make food today. So I thought those poor kids, of course, they ate it up. What else were they going to eat? For today's video, a lot of you have been asking, what are we doing for homeschooling? So what I'm going to do is Okay, Amy, let me explain something to you really quick. This is your channel. You are a homemaker who homeschools your children. Of course, your viewers, there's 143,000 of them, would like to know what you're doing. Some of them are interested in homeschooling. 
Some of them are interested in what you are homeschooling simply because they're interested in your life and your children. Either way, you owe them an explanation. It's part of your channel. Otherwise, tell them it's none of their business. Instead, you will sit here for an hour and waste their time and not give them any actionable advice. Instead, you are going to talk and talk and talk and never say anything, just like you live your life. You act like you teach your children and you do not teach your children. In the beginning, first part of this video, I'm going to speak on school, homeschooling and give you guys things that we have learned over the years and hopes to help someone else. But if you just want to continue with our day and what we're doing, I put a timestamp right over here and you can like fast forward to it because I know not all of you have school kids that you're homeschooling or some of you don't have any kids at all. So. And she couldn't have made it a separate video. That would be too much editing for you all. Let's talk homeschooling. I've been a homeschool mama for most, all of my married life. We started out, um, my daughter was in school for about two years and then just based on Greg's work schedule, he was working nights and so we decided to homeschool. So then we Okay, so you pulled Ashlyn out of second grade because Greg worked nights. How does that make sense, Amy? Greg was gone during the night and was home to sleep during the day. So instead of sending the child to school so she could play during the day and be loud and have a normal life, you kept her home and kept her quiet so Greg could sleep all day and then go to work at night. You absolutely do not make any sense. It's more like you and Greg were doing something other than work and you didn't want to have to deal with taking Ashlyn to school and picking her up from school. That's what it was. I started homeschooling out of convenience and I, I really like- Who homeschools out of convenience? Like, why don't you care about what's best for your children, Amy? Why isn't it ever what's best for your children? When I chose to keep my children out of in-person school, it was what was best for my children. When do you ever make a decision based on what is best for your kids, Amy, instead of you and Greg? The teachings of Charlotte Mason and like learning just now. Charlotte Mason, you guys, please take note that this woman is talking about a woman who died in 1923. Charlotte Mason died before my grandfather was born. My grandfather is dead. Charlotte Mason is dead. Amy's ideas of schooling are dead. Charlotte Mason was not an unschooler who did not teach her children. Charlotte Mason believed in wide spread and very liberal teaching for children. She did not believe in allowing your children to sleep all day. Charlotte Mason believed in, in at the very forefront of her beliefs were that children should at very least be put on a schedule and taught how to take care of themselves. Amy, your children don't even know what a schedule is. Your children sleep until noon and wake up however, whenever, wherever they want. Truly, and like through things. And I'm like, okay, and that led me onto a path of unschooling. And there were these people, this when the internet was not that big. These unschooling, because it's more convenient, right, Amy? Less you have to do. You chose to homeschool all of your children because of convenience. And unschooling is even more convenient because it sounded like you had to do even less. These were people that basically just let their kids play and like live life. I mean, what I've learned now. Her kids play and live life. And then you end up with an 11 year old son who cannot read. We all saw him not be able to read those cards when he did his birthday scavenger hunt, Amy. You have an 11 year old son and then you exploited him on the internet to a bunch of strangers and showed that he cannot read. I can't even imagine what his mental health is going to be like when he finds out that you put that on the internet. That you put it out there that he's 11, he's supposed to be in the sixth grade and he cannot read. It was very, very disturbing to watch, Amy. Please do not exploit your children. If you don't want to educate them, I can't do anything about that. I wish that I could. If you want to put them on the internet, I can't do anything about that. I wish that I could. But please think about these children when they get older. He's going to have a girlfriend one day. And his girlfriend, what happens when she says, I saw the video that you couldn't read at 11 years old, you, you're a retard. And then his own girlfriend makes fun of him. And it'll all be because of you. 
what if because of that interaction, he takes his own life, Amy? Because it's that bad. Because it's on the internet forever. Tell me, Amy, are you going to remove a video if one of your children wants you to? If Lauren comes and asks you to remove all of her videos, are you going to remove Lauren's videos? You know you're not because you're not going to miss out on those dineros. Amy, you sicken me, and I will not stop making these videos until you stop exploiting your children for their education, for anything. Looking back, it's like, yeah, they, the stress of trying to do the school to making them learn those things, it wasn't worth it. It was not worth it because... The stress to Amy schooling her children, it wasn't worth it. Do you know what that means, Amy? That you don't want to be a parent. Parents teach their children, whether they teach them themselves or they have somebody else teach them. That is part of parenting. If you don't want to do that, that means you don't want to be a parent, and that is okay. But stop having children if you do not want to parent them. It is child abuse. You know what? They didn't really apply themselves. I think of some of them that it was like, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do it. And we did it and did it, did it. They weren't retaining any of it. They so kids go to school every day, Amy, and sometimes they have a bad day and they don't want to do something. That's normal in, in children, Amy. That doesn't mean that they don't need to be schooled because they didn't want to do something. They were just getting enough to get by, just like you and I did in school. Like, do you remember cramming for tests? What did you do? You Amy, stop pushing your reality onto everybody else. You, that's called deflecting. You hated school, Amy. You crammed for tests, Amy. You forgot all the information afterwards, Amy. That is not what everybody else did. That is not the norm, Amy. When I went to high school, I did not cram for tests. I did not forget the information. I enjoyed high school. I enjoyed learning. I enjoyed taking the tests and getting a hundred on every single one of them. I bet out of all 10 of your children, you have a child who also would have loved school and also would have loved to go and take the tests and be the smartest kid in the class. But guess what? You robbed them of that simply for convenience, not because you wanted to protect them, not because you had a better plan for them, but simply because it was more convenient for you and Greg. And that, Amy, is despicable. Memorize the information. Could you, can you remember anything from it now? No. Yes, I can remember high school information, Amy. No. When they were older and adult and they had to learn that specific type of math. So you send a child out to maybe go work at a gas station? Like Evan was working at a gas station and he had to learn math so that he could work at a gas station? Amy, that is a horrible situation to be in. I can't imagine being an 18-year-old boy and having to cram some mathematics so that I could get a job at the local convenience store. That's pathetic. And if anybody found out he was doing that, he could be ridiculed for life. Do you not care about your children's mental health? That they're the only one that use it. Nobody else uses it. People use math, Amy, daily. They had to learn it in six weeks, and you know what? They crammed, they studied, and they learned. And then, just like you, they're going to forget it. Do you want to know how you retain things, Amy? You spend time on it. Do you know why you don't retain anything, Amy? Because you don't spend time on anything. And that worked out so much better than trying to, to cram it all into a whole year's worth of schooling. So, so you're, you're, you just said it works better than trying to cram it all in. But yet you want to cram an entire education for your children into one year. There's like a whole world of unschoolers out there. And I understand. I understand there is a complete, there you have your far right and your far left. You have this is not politics, Amy. This is school. You can have your own idea about who you want to run the country. You can have your own idea about who you want to follow into an insurrection, but you cannot have your own ideas about what works when it comes to teaching a child. It has already been proven, Amy. Children learn with repetition. You give your children no repetition. You don't even give your children the repetition of waking up every day at the same time. Your children have no structure. We all know that children learn 
based on structure and repetition. That is not a far right or far left thought, Amy. This is not a political subject. This is the subject of child abuse. This is the subject of child neglect. If you are educating your ch children, you are not abusing them. If you are allowing your children to have no education and not know how to read at 11 years old, you are abusing them. I hope that one day all the states can come together and decide that it's child abuse so that you can go to jail like Ruby Frank because what you're doing is just as bad. You are withholding knowledge from your children just the way Ruby Frank withheld food from hers. You are sick. You are controlling your children's destiny simply for your convenience. You're a pig, Amy. You're a pig and you end up in jail, I will laugh until my sides hurt, trust me. I will probably laugh until I throw up. So we'd skip a lot of things. And I thought, why are we doing these things? And so that just led me more onto the whole unschooling. So they skipped a bunch of their work and then you were like, why are we doing this? So then you wanted to be an unschooler even more because you were so good at unschooling. World and so now moving to Florida, I found this huge unschooler group like huge where there's like everybody i 100 percent think that that's why greg wanted you guys to move down to florida because greg is florida man and you are florida woman and you guys wanted what desantis is promising you wanted to be able to just stay in your little house in your own little bubble and destroy your children however you see fit because you own them because they are your property well guess what DeSantis, you, and anybody else, you guys can all go straight down under where you belong because children are people. They are full-grown people. And if you knew anything about Charlotte Mason, you would know that above all, Charlotte Mason saw children as actual full persons. She said that children were born full persons. That's what she said. Your children, Amy, are full persons and they deserve a better chance at life. Your children are going to end up being mentally ill because they don't know how to interact in society the way they need to interact. The way that you interact is crazy and your children are going to have that same perspective on interaction and it's not okay, Amy. It is not okay. But he does, not everybody, a lot of people do and I'm like, Okay, there's a whole world. So I think it's getting more, I guess, freer thinking. I'm not. Uh Is that what you call it, Amy? Freer thinking when you just say F my children? Um, I, you know, I think it's important to have government. I think it's important to have order in society, all those things. I get this, but I think that our. So you want police officers to come and save you when bad things get bad, but you don't want the government telling you what to teach your children, right? You want the children to grow up in a society and have to come be around me and my children, but you don't want to have to teach them anything about said society and being in that society politely, right? That's what you want. The world, and I think most of you can agree, especially with media and things, the things that we are fed to be Amy, you are media. You are on a social media platform. You are on TV. The FCC designates YouTube as TV. You are a television personality. And here you are doing exactly what you said. Believe and fed to listen to. They're think feeding bad information to the masses. And that is why I'm here. Because I am that alternative voice that people need to hear. The voice of reason that you have lost your marbles. Goodness for extra journalists out there, the independent journalists. Independent journalists, right here. Independent journalists showing the world about people who exploit their children on YouTube. Side note, please know viewers that YouTube does not have the same rules that Hollywood has. YouTube children do not get paid. The money goes to their parents. There is no rule that says she has to start a bank account or a fund for any of these children. They are starring in the videos. They are getting views. This is there forever to mock them when they get older. They have no control over taking it down, and they do not get paid. They are abusing their children, and because there's no system in place, they are abusing the law. The law says children deserve to get paid at least 30% of what they make. 
YouTube skirts that. YouTube, fix it. Amy, fix it. Pay your children or keep them off the channel. Children cannot consent. They are children. You cannot force your children to work on your channel for free. It is against the law. That speak on truth. Thank goodness. I remember back in the day watching. We would, you know, you'd learn school and you'd learn history. And you would just learn your textbook. Whatever the government put out, that is the textbook you taught. And you didn't hear the... The states run their own school, Amy. The government, like the big federal government that you're afraid of, they don't run the schools. The states run the schools. They get government money for government-funded programs, but the states run the school. So when you move to a different state, you decide which public schools you agree with by which states you move to. You move to Florida, why don't you put your children in a Florida school? If you agree with the way Florida is, you would think they could go to the public school and everything would be gravy, right? But no, you can't put your children in a public school. If you registered Stephen right now into sixth grade, he would have to go to middle school and not know how to read. You have Stephen down as elementary school. Lady, you have actually ruined these children's lives. Luckily, Ashlyn had your mother. And luckily, Lauren had Ashlyn and Colin. And then Lauren taught all the other children. But guess what? Lauren's not around anymore. And now these three littles that you have right now that aren't littles anymore, they're 12, 11, and 13 and 14 years old. Amy, they're not educated because you failed them and their siblings are already gone and can't continue teaching them. It's a sad situation you've gotten your children into. I'm going to pray for them the other side of the stories at all. So I was so thankful when documentaries came out and we started watching more doc we go to the library. And this lady said she was so excited when documentaries came out. Amy, when were you born? Documentaries are like the first thing that were ever recorded. It's like a guy riding a horse. A real guy riding a real horse is like a documentary of riding a horse. You said when documentaries came out. You mean, Amy, when you came out of your drug haze and realized that there was a whole world out here and documentaries was in it. A ton of documentaries and just watch them. And I'm, just, and I'm like, wow, you don't hear all these stories of it. And you don't hear all these things and just different topics that you just are fed to believe. And if <clears throat> Amy, stop talking about people feeding people things to believe. You try to make your followers believe that a $2,000 pizza oven is worth it. Don't talk about other people trying to coerce people you have a channel that supports the worst companies you try to get your followers to buy a vivor to uh, what is it how much was your slushy machine amy a thousand dollars thirteen hundred dollars how many people that actually watch you can afford that you are who you're talking about you are those evil scammers that you always talk about you just listen to that you're not going to know there's a whole other side because there are people that are controlling that. There are people that are just pushing their agenda and things. And we know that. I think that everyone can agree. And I'm hopeful, I think, especially after this last year in our world, that you are being fed an agenda. And it's amazing to me that you can say all of this with your smile on your face, but you can't actually say what you mean. Why don't you have the nerve, Amy, to actually say what you mean? You talk around it. You talk about it. You talk about your far left and your far right and uh, people shoving things down your throat and into your bodies. But you don't have the actual guts to say what you and Grabby Greg believe and the way that you guys wish that you would have been at that insurrection on January 6th. Why don't you just say it? Why don't you come out and say how your patriotism works? Come on, Amy. Grow, grow a set of uh, testiculars and let's let us hear what you really think about America. Certain things. And so thank goodness for people that speak up about teaching different truths to your children so that they can be free thinkers. They Education isn't a different truth, Amy. Like I said, there's only one truth. Your children deserve the right to be educated by somebody who is educated. And that, my dear, is not you. You can look at things analytically and objectively and not just, you know, cower under following the crowd. It's That's what you do. You cower under following your husband. Whatever he tells you, you do. You knew that it wasn't right to leave the mountain. Here you are. 
The only reason you're here is because Greg couldn't give up whatever he had on the mountain. Whatever little habit he had that got him kicked off the mountain, that's why you're off the mountain, Amy. Give up Greg and you won't have to give up everything you want. Stop cowering to him just because you don't want to be alone. Why don't you leave and hit him for that alimony and child support and then you won't have to be afraid. He'll be afraid. It's like they can stand up for truth. They can stand up for justice. You can't stand up for truth and justice, though. So you will never raise a child who can do that. And they can stand up against right and wrong. And so those are the kind of kids that I want to raise because I want them to be free thinkers. I don't want them to be fed the masses. So for unschooling, so what we... Fed the masses? What do you mean? She said, I want them to be free thinkers. I, want, I don't want them fed the masses. What's fed the masses? Fed to the masses? Fed by the masses? What do you mean, Amy? Do is we teach the basics. I teach the basics to my kids. And we're going to teach you those three things, reading, writing, and arithmetic. The three R's, like... Reading, writing, that starts with a W, and arithmetic, that starts with an A. The three R's. I think Amy and Greg are the three R's. Back in the day that they taught you in your schoolhouse, some years and sometimes it works where life is busy and we... She said she wanted to go back in the day, back in the time, but... Back in the day and back in the time, she homeschooled also. 30 years ago when her daughter was in second grade, she was still homeschooling. Back in the day, wh when do you want to go back to, Amy? When you were still uh, on your ovary, on the ovary in your mother? Like, come on, lady. Don't learn a lot or that child is really struggling that year and not reading very well. Like, I've had some that just had a harder time learning to read. And am I forced and stressed and said you had to learn, had to learn, and that was a mistake. She still has a child that can't read. I feel like that just turned them off on certain things. And so then I learned, you know what? Let them naturally learn. Let, let's just, let's see. Let's test this theory and see if it works. And you know what? It does. It really, really does. I Show us. Amy just told us that she said, let's test this theory and it works. It really, really works. So I challenge you, Amy. Show me where it works. Show me one of your children who you let run around wild and you didn't teach anything to. You didn't use your, your books. Show me one of your children that is successful. You don't have an example. You can't show us one that's successful. You, all you can show us is other people's examples that you read on the Internet. Did you know, Amy, that not everything you read on the Internet is true? And not everything you see is true either because most things that you post are fake. I read it in many forums. I read it in many books. And forums are not real, Amy. Just because people are talking about it on the Internet does not mean it, that it's real life. Different things. And I thought, it actually does work. And then you know what? That child is learning to read just fine now. That child is learning to read just fine now. And that child is 11 years old. Amy, <clears throat> sometimes children need to be taught a different way and you aren't able to teach them that is what public school is for you are not capable of teaching this child he's 11 years old and he still can't read he needs to go to public school so that he can be in a special program with specialized teachers they are trained to help special education students trust me i know people that have their masters in special education and you are not going to be able to cut cut it he needs intensive care if he's 11 and he still can't read. He needs help. He needs a tutor. He needs you to stop wasting money on pool tiles and actually pay for somebody to help educate him. It's one of those things that you can't tell anybody. It's pointless to argue with people about. You can't tell anybody because they will tell you that it's child abuse, Amy. Just like Ruby Frank, it is child abuse. If you withhold knowledge, from your child it is child abuse if you do not send your child to school and they cannot read it is child abuse if your child is not ready for the world when they turn 18 it is child abuse it is not okay and that is why you don't want to tell anybody not because people have their own opinion but because there is already a fixed opinion about child abuse and it is that it is wrong we are all in consensus that do not abuse your children. And yet here you are, massively abusing 10 children over three decades. 
and now you're filming it and putting it on the internet for the world to see and you don't think anybody should judge you well you're wrong just like ruby frank was wrong to think she could withhold food from people because she wanted something done it doesn't matter if you birth a child it doesn't matter if you brought that child straight out of existence amy they are not your children to own they are your children to raise to nurture and support you do not own those children so you do not get to abuse them stop please homeschooling do not argue with your family don't argue with teachers don't argue with anybody that's going to come against your practices a place for everybody public school teachers as well because we need you in the the ones that love to teach that love to be in there to be there for those so what should, were you, are you putting down all the other public school teachers that don't love to teach amy there's a lot of people that don't love to teach anymore because of parents like you and they still deserve an award they're still teaching children you don't love to teach and you teach children should people not like you just for that? Like, come on, Amy. Use your own thinking, reasoning skills when you speak, please. Kids, because not everybody can homeschool. So no. You can't homeschool. Not everybody can homeschool. And you are one of those people, Amy. You have relied on other people to teach your children, your mother, your other children. You cannot teach people. You're not even good at doing your Saturday sermons. You're horrible. You don't even understand what the Bible verses mean. Knocking any, any person like that at all. We all have a plan and purpose in this life to do what we're supposed to do. And it's beautiful. I'm just speaking on what we're doing for our... You haven't had a successful child that you taught alone, Amy. So your plan and purpose hasn't even been fulfilled yet. And you're still saying that you're successful. How? How are you successful? Our family, what works for us. It really doesn't matter how much stuff you have. You can do it with very basic. And I know this because there's people that homeschool in other countries and missionaries that teach kids and they learn just fine. You always tout this, that you don't really need much. But we already know that children that are born in poverty have a lower IQ on average than people that are not born into poverty. We already know that children who have lower um, standardized testing teachers, pe teachers that, that don't score as high in school and teachers that aren't as educated, they, their, their children are less educated. When you have a newer teacher, their children do do worse on the standardized tests than teachers that are that have been around for a long time. Amy, we know this. We know that good seasoned teachers are our best bet for children. We know that children having repetition is the best thing for our children. And you're going against all of that because you're lazy. And it is a tragedy for your children, an absolute tragedy. So, do you know, <laughs> this is going to knock a lot of people off, I know people aren't going to like this, do you know that if you did nothing with your child, nothing, I'm talking zero pages, zero workbooks, you didn't make them sit down and do anything, yeah, and then and when you got to fifth grade, or the grade they're supposed to be in fifth grade, and you taught them everything they need to know, do you know that that grade, you can learn everything from kindergarten through fifth grade in that grade in one year? Yeah, I know, you can, you really, really can. You really, really can. I know somebody, Amy, you always tout this and say how wonderful it is and how great it is. And this is what you want to do to your children because it works. Let me tell you something, Amy. I know somebody who came over here from another country in elementary school and they didn't speak the language and <clears throat> they were put into school and they had to learn. And in a year he did learn the language and in a year he did fit into school. And in a year, he kind of caught up. It was very, it wasn't what you said. He didn't know all the spelling words. He couldn't write. Um, he didn't know all the math facts that you're talking about. It, he did not catch up in a year, but he did learn English. And let me tell you something else about that, Amy. You tout that it's so great for your children, but you don't think of the mental health aspect of that. Do you know how it feels to be left behind? Do you know how it feels to be behind other children? Do you know how it feels to know that all the other kids know things that you don't know? No, you don't know that, Amy, because your parents actually parented you. And they actually got you an, as well of an education as they could before you started gallivanting off and having kids. But you didn't have that. Your, your mother had a job. Your mother gave you consistent house your mother gave you a consistent life of home of sending you to school and all of that you've never given that to your children can you imagine the mental health issues you are creating for your children my friend from another country 
it took him years, years to not feel self-conscious around the other kids because he was so far behind. We have a law called no child left behind because it's so detrimental to children to be left behind, Amy. We know that children that are not touched can actually die from lack of touch. If we leave our children behind, that's what they are, Amy, forgotten children. Please don't make your kids forgotten children. This is the saddest YouTube channel since Ruby Frank because maybe you don't beat your kids, but you are definitely abusing them. There is kids, um, their brains are more developed at that time. So even if you never sat, your child is not going to become um, like totally dumb sitting there doing nothing. You're speaking to them. You're communicating with them. You're doing things in the kid. But you can hardly communicate, Amy. People can hardly understand you. So how are your children going to learn communi proper communication from you? With them. You're having them learn order. You're having them. You don't el even allow the boys in the kitchen. So they're learning nothing about cooking. They're learning nothing about math. You learn math in, in the kitchen, Amy, where you do, you know, measurements. You're not teaching your boys that. I can't even imagine what your boys know because they've never done anything. You give your boys no responsibility. Learn to analytically figure things out just because you daily li live through things. So if you just didn't do anything and then in one grade, I'm just choosing fifth grade, you can choose any grade. You can start in middle school and taught them. There is like a huge review on all of that. Your kids will naturally learn how to do things. I know. And they will naturally be left behind and they will naturally see that all the other children know more than they do. People aren't going to like that, but that is the truth. And it's truth for those of you that have done unschooling, that have taught that way, you know it works. It's just a different way to look. And this lady keeps spouting all these lies to 100 and what does she got? 100 and... 43,000 followers, and she doesn't have one successful child that she raised like this unschooling. Not one. Yeah, thanks. And so there's lots of testimonies online. Type in unschooler success. You will see so many people that function as normal human beings on this earth learning that way. And look, she touts it, yet let's think about Amy's grown children. This on the screen is Amy's oldest daughter, Ashlyn. She's about 27 to 30 years old. And Amy did not raise her. Amy did not put her to school. Amy did not teach her. This girl had to go to her grandmother to get taught, to go to college. Amy's other son, Colin, who also lives in Michigan, he's also not college educated. He works some just regular job because he wasn't prepared by his mother to work a good job. Her other son, Evan, she left him. He was working at a gas station. What about Lauren? Lauren is an overweight stay-at-home mother who had to get married at 19 because what, uh, what else did she have? Jaden, uneducated. Um, Brooklyn, working at fast food or, or a clothing retail store, and she's 16. She has to have a full-time job because her mother uh, educated her and then pretty much just put her out on the streets. Amy has no successful children. She's put no child through college with these ideas that she's spouting. It's ridiculous. Listen to her daughter say who raised her because it was not Amy. Basically took care of me since I was a baby. My mom had me really young. She helped raise me. And when I was older and I needed to go to school, she let me stay with her. And I lived there all through college and all I've ever known is her. She is my rock. One of the most important people in my life. I can't remember her missing a birthday, a ballet recital, a play, graduation. She came to everything. She even sent my dog Parker a birthday card. She do it every year. She never missed the dog's birthday. This lady sound great and Amy was never around her. It makes you wonder why, right? Bad people don't like to be around good people, and her mother actually sounded like a good lady. That's the kind of person she was. She knew what mattered to me. Amy doesn't know what matters to any of her children. And as a little kid, I wanted to be with her all the time. I'd go out there and say, can I help you clean the perm rods? That was a job that I always loved doing. I'd rinse them out, and she'd say, why don't you go out to your playhouse and make us some lunch? And I'd bring lunch to her clients. She probably just wanted to get rid of so they lived with grandma when they were young. And I, I, the way that her children speak about her now that they're grown, it seems as though Amy and Greg did not raise the very three oldest. Uh, Colin, Ashlyn, and Lauren spent a lot of time, I think, with their grandmother. Because I think Amy and Greg were on that book of sugar. 
<laughs> but I always wanted to be near her. We cooked together, and she'd always have out some little gadget for avocados or whatever. She had everything in her kitchen, everything. And we cooked together, and no one makes food like she does. Nobody makes food like Grandma does, especially not Amy. Because Grandma cared about the food that she cooked, and Amy doesn't care about any of you all. She created this feeling of home for me. Wherever she is, is home to me. Every little thing she did for me has changed my life. I'm where I am because of her. What is Imagine the only successful child you have, the only child that went to college, and that's what she has to say about her life, that it was all because of her grandma, and she's where she was because of her grandma. That's because Amy is a trash mom, and she had to go to her grandma to be parented. Amy, if you don't start parenting the young ones, who's going to parent them? Jaden, because Jaden is also a failure. Let's listen to Jaden not understand love, and Jaden, is this you not also not not being able to be forthright about your feelings. If you feel some type of way about people who are transsexual, why don't you say it instead of being evasive like your disgusting little mother? Because for me, I thought I knew what it was until I had the culture screaming in my both ears trying to tell me that it's 10 different things and that just left. I don't understand how a child of Amy's could, uh, could know what love is. Is love nasty casseroles? Is love um, good, great, delicious? In like this gray area, not really truly knowing what love or my own view of what sexuality looks like. And when I was in middle school, I really know what I believed in that. And so when I had friends that would come up to me that were females and were born females and tell me, well, I don't identify as that. That really can be. Hold on, Jaden. You look like a liar right here. Look at those low liar eyes. Hold on, Jaden. I've. I've been watching you for a long time now, Jaden, since you was a little fat kid. Let me tell you something. You grew up in a town called Zirconia. The population of Zirconia is not that big. You went to a small church and you were homeschooled. You did not go to a public middle school. So when you were in middle school over there in Zirconia, you were homeschooled. So tell me, little girl, where did you run in to females that were born a female and identify as not a female? Where did you see them? Where did you meet them? How many did you meet? How were you so confused? Jaden, I call BS. I say that you have never had a conversation with another middle school girl and she has never told you that she doesn't identify as a girl, but she was born a girl. You made that story up to simply make fun of transvestite people, of people who don't, uh, don't genderize the way you do. You wanted to put people down because you think you're better than them. You're ridiculous. And you can't just come out and say how you feel because you're scared like your mom. You're afraid to say what you want to say because you have no guts. You're a spineless, gutless, hides behind your Bible piece of crap just like your mother. Don't come at people about their sexuality just because you think you're a Bible thumping little turd. You don't get to do that. You don't get to make a channel and make a podcast and talk about how... They confused you in middle school because they didn't know what they wanted to be. Who cares if you were confused? I'd be confused every time I looked at you if I had to look at you every day. I'd be confused why you look like look the way you look. Look at your face, Jaden. Maybe that girl was confused why you look the way you look. Maybe it made her life harder. Don't come on here talking about how they made your life harder. You think that that little girl who who didn't know what sex she was supposed to be, you'd think her life wasn't already hard and difficult. She told you she was having a difficult time. And here you are saying she made your life difficult. You're a piece of crap, Jaden. Who cares if she made your life difficult? Think about it this way. If you had a good mom, you would have just been able to go talk to your mom about your confusions and you guys would have worked through it and it would have been a learning lesson, not difficult or disgusting or whatever else you guys label it because you guys are hateful bigots. You are a bigot. You're an 18-year-old bigot, and you're old enough to know it better now. Grow up, Jaden. Don't be around your mom very much longer because she's going to completely ruin you. 
if I'm being completely honest with you. But is it okay for me to say that I'm a boy and to act like a boy? Yes, it's perfectly okay. Anything you want to do, as long as it's not hurting anybody else, is perfectly fine, Jaden. Your mom tells you that it's not fine, but then your mom doesn't teach you anything. How does that make sense? Make that make sense. Anything that your mom tells you is probably a lie. She doesn't have your best interest in heart. It really is confusing because you really are. It's not confusing. You can be what you want to be. If you want to be a redhead girl who does podcasts and shames people, that's what you are, isn't it? You are just exploring and trying to figure out what you believe in who you are. And I'm so thankful that I had people in my life come beside me and explain to me. She said she's so thankful she had people right beside her come beside her and explain to her. Jaden, how do you know that those people that explained to you were correct? How do you know you're right? You sit here with your smug, stupid, stained yellow teeth talking about how you're right how do you know you're right there's nothing proving that you are correct but yet you sit here with that stupid look on your face talking about you're right and that those people are confused and they almost confuse you no you're confused and you don't know how to be nice or polite to people or accepting because you're a bigot what love is from a biblical perspective how my identity is not found within my feelings how my identity is found within christ and what he says about me and who he created me to be so who did he create you to be? A hateful bigot that blames your problems on other people, makes up stories and lies, and says you met somebody in middle school that you never met? Rather than the confusion that I was feeling inside. And in the Bible, love and sexuality is clearly defined within certain parameters. And in the Bible, love and sexuality is clearly defined within certain parameters. You had to be that person, right, Jaden? You had to get on the internet and tell people that love and sexuality is your way. Your way or the highway, right? Just like your mother. You're a bigot. Love is love, Jaden. You don't get to decide what love is. And neither does your stupid little piece of paper that you carry around that you call a Bible. That doesn't get to decide love either. So leave people alone about love. Unless it's you that you're worried about, shut up. And there's people that are starting to look at it because they're trying to get away from the government's control and teaching their children. Anyway, that was an example of an uneducated child. And, in, and by the way, watch the rest of her videos if you want to see the worst editing ever. She went to school for editing, and she edits worse than Amy. I've only been editing since I started making these videos. I'm the worst editor in the world, but I'm already better than Jaden. I taught myself in two days to make my first video. Jaden, learn to edit better. Actually get good at something. Lose a little bit of weight. Stop being a bigot. Maybe your life will change for the better. Children, anyways, and so the, the first step, the first step under the unschooling thing is de-school your kids. And I said, how awesome that they say that. And then when you get, they get... How awesome that they say that, Amy. You don't understand what unschooling means, obviously. To unschool your children, they would have had to be schooled. Unschooling means you're taking it away, right? You have never schooled your children, so how could you unschool them? Unschooling means to take away the idea of school. You've never taught your children anything. You've never given them an idea of school. All you do is let your children run amok like wild little apes. That's it. To high school? Real life, real life math. Make sure they know their English and how to speak properly and type up sentences and, and speak. And This lady, this lady right here who can't speak said for high schoolers, just make sure that they know how to talk. They know how to speak correctly. How are you going to teach them that, Amy? Use words, all those things. It's a beautiful thing when you get your mind wrapped around a different way than what we're taught. So we've enjoyed our read aloud time. and we've Her children, I'm going to say it once again, are 11, 12, 13 and 14 years old and she reads third grade books to them aloud for school amy you are a joke i also like family read aloud time but there's these things called books that are actually relevant to your children and their age group please try a little harder i know your children have very small attention gaps because you don't teach them anything but you need to work on that because if your kids go around any other children and tell them that they've never read a big book like Harry Potter or something that's big and well-known, they're going to get laughed at. 
I know you don't care, but some children enjoy doing things that other children do. Imagine that, huh? Trying to integrate with your peers so you could have a normal adulthood, but you don't care about that. And sitting and listening and the kids enjoy it. And it's like, we, after each one, we talk, we're like, what do you think's gonna happen? What do you think's gonna go? It just helps that going. So read aloud time is a big thing. I, we did it way back in the day for a long time. Then I had a lot of babies. I would fall asleep during read aloud time. Yeah. And then I stopped doing it for some time. And I'm like, the last couple of years, I'm like, I need to get back to our read aloud. The really sad part is you can even teach a baby to read. This lady has an 11 year old son who can't read. And if you go Google baby that reads on YouTube, you'll find tons of babies that can actually read. When children are young, their brain is open, wide open to learn. It's amazing. They can learn numerous languages. They can learn so much. And Amy is just robbing them of this by not, uh, not teaching them anything. She just lets them lay around all day, sleep till noon, wear their pajamas all day, run in the rain. It's just it's so sad. Time again, and it happened. And that's been a beautiful thing to be able to expand and read on a lot of books. So just get a variety. We're going to go inside, and I'll show you some of the stuff that we have used, um, that we are using right now. And I, I have out there the videos of things that we've done over the years. And so what um, I did is I have my own curriculum. Not a paid thing. It's You can buy it if you want, but it's free. So I'm not pushing my, my paid thing. I'm pushing my free thing for you. So what I did is I started, we bought curriculum. Out. She has a curriculum, but she unschools, which has no curriculum. Amy, you don't make sense. You say that your kids don't need repetition, but you sell books with repetitious math facts. I buy books, all these things, then we wouldn't use half the problems. And then um, this is when, I think it was in 2008, is when the economy crashed and Greg had lost his job. We didn't have money for schooling supplies. And I found stuff online for free to use. Just a bunch Once again, your kids couldn't go to school and be in a public school where they had actual materials and could interact with other children they had to stay home with your welfare products even though there was public schools for them to go to because it was more convenient for you right Amy to worksheets so we use worksheets like crazy I printed off there was a ton online a ton so I did that for that year it was cheap to print things back then I had an old printer I'm like gosh I miss that old printer I used one little thing of ink on it it was like an old school printer I bought it at Amy talks for about 10 minutes about printers. If you have the same issue with Amy about printers, please just Google things. There's a way to fix it. Get a thermal um, business printer. It's black and white. You're printing all black and white. If you need to print for school papers, Google thermal printing. There you go. Just saved your life. Amy, it's like problem solved, lady. You've been doing this for 30 years and you don't have any solutions for homeschoolers. Like, I... It's, it's amazing. No tips, no tricks. It's wild. How? How did you do this for 30 years? Thermal printer, ladies. If you need a printer that you'll never buy ink for again, it's called a thermal printer. It prints in black and white only, but it burns the image onto the paper with like, you know, thermal, thermal printing. Anyway, Google it. You can get one. You might be able to get one for a couple hundred bucks but then think about it you know you don't have to ever buy ink again you don't have to sit here and cry for 20 minutes like amy about ink prices when you buy a six hundred fifty thousand dollar house i don't know why ink is an issue like an ink surplus website for like a dollar fifty i could print up three containers of paper like 1500 pieces of paper with that one little thing you know what i can do now none like i literally can do 20 pages and my ink cartridge is dead so ugh, they make it so it's so impossible now but anyways that's another story <laughs> the ink cartridges are ridiculous i just they did that just for you, Amy, just to get under your skin. Amy versus the paper companies. I was watching a YouTube video where a guy took apart the ink cartridge and it showed like a little flap of foam and a couple drops of ink on it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so, yeah, just the scammers where they don't even fill them up anymore. You can't even use You're the scammers. You're trying to scam people to buy a $2,000 oven. You're trying to scam people to buy a $3,000 couch that they don't need. Your followers don't need a $2,700 couch. You could have gotten a couch off of Amazon that was functional for a couple hundred dollars and then hawked that to your followers so that they would have something that they could actually get. But you don't care about your followers. You care about you and getting free stuff and that's why your channel is going to die. And hopefully laws will change and your children won't be able to be exploited anymore the refillable cartridges anymore which is so sad so i don't know live and learn whatever <laughs> so now but you never live and learn you're 50 and you haven't learned yet yeah, so what i did is i offered it 
in book form on Amazon for people that um, it's cheaper to buy it on Amazon than to print it off. So I know for myself, I started printing my own off for my kids this year because I'm like, I'll just print off the pages. Well then, my we got a new printer. That printer, it did not last for pages for the ink cartridge. I already bought my second ink cartridge and I'm like, I've only printed off a month of school. So I actually went out and bought my books too because it's cheaper for me to buy. I think an ink cartridge is, I think my we won't see the books. I bet she didn't really buy them. They cost like 25 bucks each or something. There's no way she went and bought them. She would show us. She's just not going to have the kids doing school. It's not like they do school anyway. My ink cartridge is like $26. The books are, I think they're $25 on Amazon. So it's cheaper for me to buy the book for the entire year than it is for me just to get the ink cartridge. So that's what I did right now. If Jaden was really in a college or something, colleges usually have really cheap or free printing. Jaden could print it all for you at the college, uh, like, campus where whatever they call it these days, the hub. But Jaden could print them off at the hub, but Jaden doesn't really go to college. Jaden just goes to the church and works for free. I'll go ahead and show you the ones I printed off, but I did end up buying it because it was cheaper. If you're doing elementary, think an hour a day, that's it. So these are the times that she really thinks that people should be doing school. Like if your kid only learns to do something for an hour a day, how are they gonna have a job, Amy? You think in middle school? How happy are any of her children gonna be at a job when they can't? even sit for longer than four hours like an hour and a half a day that's minimum high school two hours a day minimum i tell my kids that sometimes the ones that are a little bit harder on themselves for when it comes to school and they feel like they have to get out of that room i say okay if you're doing more than four hours a day you're doing too much like come back let's come back you should be able to enjoy life and do other fun things so those are some if you're doing more than four hours a day you're doing too much said how many high schoolers last year amy you're out of touch with reality Children need more than four hours. They need interaction with each other. They need other things, Amy. Thoughts to think about. So, okay. So I tell my kids, I'm like, you're going to have to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Teach it when they're ready. Amy's basic learning, and then you're out the door. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You don't even know how to read. Don't worry about shoving math facts into them. At, what is it, third grade they teach it? I think third grade, second grade. I don't even know when they start. But She doesn't know when they teach anything, because she doesn't teach anything. I think it's third grade. I'm just thinking it's third grade. You start when you can with your kids. If they can get them when they're young, awesome. If they can't, just wait. If you, it, Every child's different. So that is how we do our, our speed tests. I'm like, those are one of those things you just have. Those speed tests are like 13 minus 8, guys. 7 minus 9. Have to know. I'm like, as yucky as it is. I guess, I guess 9 minus 7, not 7, 7 minus 9. Is as much as you hate multiplication facts, as much as you, I love math, but I have some kids that do not like it. So I always say, no matter what, you're going to have to know how to do these. These are something you have to do. You don't have to know exactly the Pythagorean theorem. You don't have to know all the, 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 the formulas, but you have to know. And they will never even learn how to learn those theories, Amy, because you have never even given them a basis of how to learn how to do these in your head. That's part of life. So that's something we focus on and do in here. And for us, I, what we're doing this year. They had math facts like addition and subtraction. These kids are 11, 12, 13, and 14. Is we are doing, I'm doing my books, which I don't have the books. I just printed things off here. So what I did is I went out and got the grade levels for each of my children. Um, I'm doing three of them that I have to do that are in um, elementary and three of, she just said she's doing three kids that are in elementary. Her kids are 11, 12, 13 and 14. She's got an 11, 12, and 13 year old in elementary. Elementary is fifth grade. She's got a 13 year old in fifth grade. Lady, you are criminally abusive to your children. Criminally. Somebody call the police. Where is the prosecutor that's prosecuting Ruby Frank? Bring them on over because Amy needs prosecuted. This is criminal. She has Jensen as an elementary student. No effing way, Amy. Slow your roll. You lost your mind. Go see a doctor. Middle school, and so I just printed off my pages here. I printed off on this wonderful printer right here that I got from Walmart for like $25. The ink cartridges, <laughs> it wasn't 25 maybe it was 30 The ink cartridges are like $25. It does not. You get what you pay for, Amy. Buy nice or buy twice even last so that's okay i didn't need i need once but we all know you would never do a little bit of research but because you don't have good reading comprehension do you amy so anyway so i know it's so crazy so i just ordered the book so that's what we're doing so what we do is we do these that has meant counting aloud out loud we gotta do it's got mental math and it has a simple counting out loud for 11 12 13 14 year olds it's you do one page a day 
a little, these are story problems, so they did story problems, and then do them. And if they need more help with something, we do it. Like the um, struggle with penmanship and writing. Again, just different, have to, and that's okay. We have our own writing book. I have my own that my kids have done. Penmanship in middle school. They have already done through the book, so it's one of those, like, I don't want to do it again. So I found this one, and it was the print handwriting book for teens. Great, because most of it's... She literally has kindergarten for middle schoolers. Aimed towards younger kids, right? This is what you get when you ask Amy for help. She's a 30-year homeschooler, and she gives you kindergarten for middle school. This is the help. This is what Amy's doing for homeschool. And so this was nice because it goes through and it has different quote things like happiness is a perfume you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. So it's got just quotes, things like that. I think mine has a lot of scriptures in it. They just have written it. So this for us, we don't do a lot of writing. We don't, we don't, right, we have math, we have English. So how are they gonna write things when they get older, Amy? What if one of their job entails keeping detailed reports? You just totally screwed them. They can't have that job. So most of it's out loud. I don't have them do a, write, a lot of writing. So here I say, do one page, write a page. It has to be good. That's how it works. And so they have these for teens and they also have a cursive one for teens as well. We have that one as well. So this is good and just goes through and teach. I have a couple that want to do cursive. Some that don't. She hasn't used those. She's, she, they will not use those this year. That's just because she was hopeful. I'm going to do cursive. And you know what? The beauty is whatever you want to learn, whatever you want to learn in your life. And then we all have Dawson. Whatever you want to learn in your life. No, Amy, that's not how it works with children. I'm sorry. They need basics. You said that, but you're not teaching them the basics of even how to take care of themselves, of even how to build a schedule, build a routine. You're failing your children on every level you could fail them on. Done this. I think my kids, I think every one of these kids have done this book before, Math and Geography. This is for third to sixth grade. She only has one child who qualifies for sixth grade, Stephen. It's a cheap book. You can get it. They love doing it. So I have, I never did this one with Steven, so I got it up for him to do. So it's just simple. We do a couple pages a day. It goes through and teaches them how to read a map. Real simple. It goes through the states and it goes through um, the world as well. So this is something simple you can get on Amazon. I used to buy the comprehensive curriculum book. It's literally kindergarten works. As well. Um, those are okay, but the problem is they jump around so much in topics. I, what I would do is I'd get the year before. So if your kid's going into fifth grade, I would get a fourth grade comprehensive curriculum. If you get an even lower grade so that so that they can get through it so I have to do even less. One extra page is due. So there are some times in my life where I was busy and I needed my kids to be busy. So it's just You were busy and you needed your kids to do things and you didn't care if they learned. You are pathetic. And the devices are doing stuff I'd say here to these pages. So I Why'd you have 10 kids? So you could be pathetic to them? I got the workbooks for the year earlier and then they would sit. And You're like the Duggars. You had these kids just to abuse them. Do it because it's like a review. It is a little bit more advanced than what we would do. So it would be learning as well and challenging. So those books are good as well. I think it's comprehensive curriculum books. And then the other thing we're going to do this year is the United States. I think everybody in elementary school, or if we miss it in elementary school, we do it in the beginning of middle school. Just something we do so they cover all the states. So I have not done that at all with my younger three. Autumn did it a few years ago. Her younger three are 11, 12, and 13, and they've never heard anything about any of the states. I think the older ones did, and so. Autumn learned from the older kids, of course, because Lauren was home and she taught Autumn. For um, them, I said, okay, let's do the 50 states now. We've done it where you just got a notebook and we write everything on paper, find it. You should have just graduated Autumn with Brooklyn at 14 or at 13. I mean, why not? I do. I found it. Discover the 50 states of America. This was great to get. So in each book, what we do is we cover a state. We do two a week. So right now, I won't do their work, but you would, you know, they would choose like, here's Connecticut. She won't show you the work because they can't write. So what we do is we go to, I think it's, what's the website? Homeschool Pop is one, and we watch a YouTube video on it. And then it tells us about the state, teaches us a little bit about it, and then I have them go, and I find, like, the food of that state. So, like, we did, um, let's see, Connecticut is going to be, I wrote down lobster roll clam pizza. That was something. Could, could you imagine Amy making a lobster roll? Big in the area. So I was going to make foods in that area, but I'm like, I don't think, like, one with pulled pork for Alabama. Like, my kids don't like pulled pork. She was like, heck no, we ain't making none of this stuff because we like chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese in this house. So I'm not going to make it. But we talk about the different foods for that area. Obviously, it's not for the whole state. And then we watch the video. Then they have to go do research on their own because they have tablets. They have um, laptops they can look at. And so they go and find and fill these in right here. This is kind of really neat color in the state. And then find an interesting fact on it. So third grade work. Just 
it's teaching them to do things on their own, and then they're also loving learning it. I know the kids like this week, they're like, oh, I really, they were excited to teach it, but we got Florida on here too. So we're gonna do the 50 states. We're gonna do two a week, otherwise it's gonna take us a whole year to go through. That's what we're covering for my young ones. We're doing Bible, we're doing um, the spelling, handwriting, math, English, maps, and geography, and then we're also doing like a read aloud book and they have to read on their own. What about science? So I've got a bunch of books here. What about history? That I ordered from my local library, and as we finish one, we get another one to read it. What about music? So right now we, we finished. What about PE? The Llama and a Family that was more of a younger one, but still a funny book. And then we're reading the um, Number of the Stars book right now, so we should finish that this week. And then they come, they've got a book, and they read a couple chapters each day. Simple and easy. And that's what we do for the, that's the end of um, elementary school and middle school for my kids. And then I have one in high school. So high school comes along, and I say, okay, what is it? that you feel you're lacking in and what is it you feel you need a review in and so then we kind of go through the different things so if you can do extra things that's awesome if you can't that's okay like i bought sand sifters for our venice so high school it's just what do you think you need to learn autumn can you take the ge te the e test yet okay make sure you can take the ged test and then they're gonna sift um shark tooth hunting trip work. shark tooth hunting that is really middle school work. We're gonna sift through the sand and get those. There was also a recipe for um, some slime that we were. Oh yeah, slime. That's definitely middle school stuff. We're gonna make. So I've got that right here to make some fun slime. So I looks like she's got some beans down here to count too. That's some. That's some middle school stuff. I got the stuff for that. I planned that out for the month. I'm trying to think of different theme things to do for your family. Like ours was gonna be the pool party thing. So we're gonna have a whole big pool party day. We have different games. We have different activities. And so base it around that, just having them look forward to something fun to do. Coffee. Look at that. And the big old gigantic drinks these ladies, this lady gets like, what is that? A thousand calories? In case we're out and about. They are for a Monday morning. Monday morning, did almost, well, I didn't do anything at home at all, but I did what I wanted to do with you guys. At all? I had At all. That. I didn't do anything. I threw the dish in the dishwasher, so okay, no, laundry, back to the floor. <laughs> yeah, nothing at all. the bathroom, started our bathroom. <laughs> and then we're heading out, but I didn't really. And you also made two Saturday videos. Why do you do that Saturday thing? It's not on Saturday. You don't take the time out to even learn the scriptures. You don't take the time out to study the Psalms. You just talk about them on a random day that you choose. You did two today. In this video, you did two Saturdays. You're a cheater and a liar, Amy. You're like the army baby. You do more before five o'clock than anybody else, but I didn't. So we'll I'll get back. You don't do more before five than anybody else, Amy. You don't. And that's ridiculous for you to even say that. We'll finish up the day, but we are out because it is hurricane preparedness. Yes, it is. And in order to get prepared for a hurricane, you have to have a big, gigantic coffee. You have to be. Sorry. You have to be. So mm -hmm. we are, like, everybody's sending prayers. Thank you for all that. So we yep, are, like. Yep. And we are sending them back out to oh, others the in the area. And, oh, there it is. No, oh, how okay. weird was that? There's emergency alert. Let's see. Look at that. Mm. Well, that's crazy. I know. Amy, do you watch these back and see that we can never see your phone? You don't hold it up long enough. It's not focused enough. Your camera's crap. We can hear your camera moving like the motor's dying. Get a new camera. You've had it for years. You use it every day. It's broken. <coughs> your phone and mine at the same time. Have food, water, cash, fuel, and medication. Oh. oh, it's talking. Warning is in effect for this area for dangerous and damaging winds. This warning is issued up to 36 hours before hazardous conditions begin. She's got her big fat coffee. She don't care. Urgently complete efforts to protect life and property. Life Have and property. food, water, cash, fuel. Life and property. That's not important to her. Life and property. Maybe we'll take a couple of these kids away and we'll get some, some money from them. And medications for three plus days. Follow instructions from local officials. <laughs> Well, look at that. Wow, well, crazy. Well, yeah, it's good that they get It's exciting they, that they notify you. After what just happened with, with some home. fires and oh things. My goodness, and Are you talking crap about the fires? Why weren't you there to help them then? Come on, Florida man. You don't even know what happened with any fires. Don't be talking about things you don't know about Greg Sickle. You're sitting here laughing about a hurricane, talking about some fires. Shut up. So, no warnings. Yeah, so we've got food. I got ramen. I got lots of cheese. Water. We got lots of water, and we have our refrigerator. She's got ramen and cheese. Yum. For that storm food, guys. Freezers, and we have a generator. So yeah. we just had to order a cord for it so it can be long, but we can use it mm -hmm. if it doesn't get here beforehand. Oh, yeah. And then what else? So we're now on the hunt for some gas because mm -hmm. we don't have any gas. So, so anyway, so wait, keep talking. Oh, so then I, I, I don't know. Honey, keep talking. So what else? We got? So we got to go get gas. What, because, I, what if I don't want to keep you talking? You keep talking. You always like to talk. So we have to go get our generator run. We would all enjoy it if you would stop talking, Greg. All of us. Uh, propane. Gas. Yeah, it's like a dual fuel thing. So we've got a. Now he's got to explain to us about this dual fuel again. We know, Greg, 
your stupid thing takes a bunch of different kinds of gas and we don't care because it costs $800. You didn't even go get a real one. Real generators. You can go to Costco and get a generator for $5,000 to hook up for your house. That's how I know your little funky $800 generator ain't crap. Um, like a big propane tank in the yard and a small one. Mm -hmm. That propane tank is going to accelerate through when the storm hits. It's going to accelerate through and blast through somebody's roof because they're not going to tie it down. Like a grill size one, a 20 pounder, whatever yeah. they call that thing. But uh, it, it makes more power for longer on gas. Yes. So this the generator something that we're going to like lay in a pad for, you know, we're going to anchor it down and all that kind of good stuff. You're going to lay in a pad and anchor down a $800 generator. You're a clown, Greg. You are an actual clown. Where's your red nose? Build a house around it. You're going to build a house around a $800 generator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a whole, it's like a big project that we got coming, but not we're yet. not we're not ready for that just quite yet. Right. Still doing other things in the yard, so. Right. Still tearing up pools and ruining grass. Yeah, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get used gas this time around. So we're gonna go get two gas cans, hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll buy some, and then fill yeah. up a gas, fill up. I think it, it, I'm sorry, it runs for like 10 hours on a tank. Yeah, and that'd at be like 50% yeah, load, yeah, and our, our house is already pre-wired for the generator. Yeah. So it's got a, it's got like a breakout box with a, you know, they fused it incorrect. All the 64-year-old women that watch Amy want to hear about a breakout box and the fused-in generator, right? And they have the transfer switch and all that kind of stuff. So if we're you know we're we're calculating if we got a couple cans of gas and how much you know, run? we won't run the thing nonstop no. you know it's like we'll we'll Wait. cool the house down in the, a couple you'll just turn the the refrigerators on and off on and off so that they burn out right burn up that two thousand dollar refrigerator Amy just bought rooms down yeah. or whatever and I think the refrigerators will stay alive and the kitchen's up mm -hmm. the back basically the two areas the butlers and the yeah, main kitchen is up and then the garage where the freezers are yeah so. so we should be good we should be okay we should be just, good. yeah we won't run it like non-stop and then we have the small ac yeah you know the for, garage we can take they have the ac that is made for like one bedroom literally for like 400 square foot that's what we use yeah because that's house. see there's 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 a, a lot there's there's actually a lot involved to try to get your house up on a generator and the ac is one of those things and uh they have like a soft start that you can add to your air conditioner mm -hmm. and you know instead of that shocking load of your ac when it starts the soft start will ramp it up slowly over time so you can run your ac on your house generator as well you know okay. without such a big deal what are you looking at amy why can't you pay attention to him if we all have to hear about the stupid soft start and the ac that you wanted him to talk about ramping up why can't you pay attention you never pay attention to him when he talks you make us listen but you are looking around and not paying attention to him if we have to listen to this shit then so do you yeah but these are you know this is like a 500 dollars switch so i'll this guy's talking about a $500 switch for an $800 generator. Greg, you bought the wrong generator. Right. All these things we kind of have to do in stages and stuff. Sure. You wouldn't have to if you had a job because you bought a $650,000 house. You'd think you'd be able to afford a good enough generator to back it up. So it's like our trial run right now. Yeah, trial run. We do have a, we got an air conditioner that we can use. So mm -hmm. first we'll be getting, we're just going to fill up my car. Scott, I'm gonna, I mean, I feel like a quarter tank of gas. Mm -hmm. We're going to get gas. So we have that, but, and we got a pool to swim in. So I think oh, we're yeah. going to be good. So yeah. it shows, I think Tuesday to Wednesday coming through. So mm -hmm. we'll, we're not in the direct path. We're uh -oh. right a little bit below it. So we should just get the rain. So I'm like, we've lived through rains in the mountains. So we got oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is nothing. And we've lived through some crazy <laughs> winds up there. Yeah, too. Well, so this should be. We've so, had 70, 80 mile gusts in the mountains. Yeah, and we don't really have, there's really no trees yeah. by us. Michigan, behind us. tornadoes were setting down. Yeah, so we should, we should be. And we got to do, so we have to do things like deflate our floaties. Like, yeah. wow, it's got deflated. So we're going to do that, get our chairs all stacked up and mm -hmm. kind of pick up the yard a little bit so nothing blows. But we should, we should be good. So it's what we're going to do next. We're going to go get some caskets, hopefully. We're going to go to Walmart and see if people get things like bread and milk like they did in the mountains. Uh -huh. See if there's any gas cans. All right. So, ready? Let's, let's go. go. You know, we, we just watched the car and it had a gas can in the truck. And I was like, oh. don't, put the, don't put the mojo on our trip. Look at it. It's all dudes getting out. It's all dudes going to try to find trash. Like, you can see the look on their face. And it's like, I need gas can. I need gas can. We're just going to go lows because we're right here. Yeah. Like, real quick. I'm sure it'll be more money. But, oh, look, right there in his back of his truck is a gas can. Okay. <laughs> I was not a Christian. I, I was going to say. I take that. But I, if I was him, I'd tie that thing. Did you guys hear that? I cannot believe you, Amy. I can't. Like, I, where? Where did you come up with that idea? How does that come out of a Christian's mouth? She sat there in a natural disaster during a hurricane, saw somebody else's gas can that you know that they're on their way to go fill up, and she said if she wasn't a Christian, she would steal it. 
Amy, I don't consider myself a Bible thumper like you. I don't go to co- I don't go to church every Sunday, but I would never, ever, ever think about stealing somebody's gas can out of the back of their truck, whether I was a Christian, whether I wasn't a Christian, whether it was a hurricane, whether there was no hurricane. What kind of person thinks like that? I'll tell you who. Somebody who steals. People who steal think about stealing. People who scam think about scamming. People who do bad things think about bad things. You pulled up next to that truck, and I would not doubt it if this day and age there weren't so many cameras that you would steal it. I bet back in the day you and Greg did your fair share of stealing when there were no cameras and there, there weren't ways for you to get caught. You are a horrible human being, Amy. And if you say that around your children, I would have stole that. What do you think that they will think? What do you think that they will learn? That as long as nobody's looking, including your God, that they can take what they want. You are a piece of crap, Amy. This is a hurricane. And you're talking about stealing somebody's actual gas can that they need. Something's wrong with you. Premium at the Circle K. Across the street at Marathon, they still had everything. Okay. And they have propane there. We have a propane too. Yeah, propane too. So fun. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> we st- we're out of propane too, so fun. No, it's not fun, and it's not fun for these Floridians. They're trying to help you, Amy. They've been through this before, and some of them have lost houses. I know you don't care about people, and I know if you lost your house, you'd be devastated, but you don't care about other people losing theirs, and these people are afraid, and you're laughing and making light of it and joking, and people were watching your channel waiting for you to speak to your followers about this, and all you did was laugh, act crass, and be joking about this hurricane the entire time you know people lost their houses in this hurricane right still have toilet paper hey Hey, that's all good thank you i found a gas place our little where we were at there was no gas by the lows everything was getting like taken out so we went by ours by our house there it's kind of middle of nowhere i thought that might be more um and that was empty completely everything was empty of gas amy and you're sitting here laughing like people are taking this serious take this serious for once in your life Take something serious. My gosh. So now we went into town here, and then uh, we're, this is still got gas, so we're going to fill up some gas. All right, we got gas. We filled up our gas tank and fill up our gas can. So we are ready for our generator. So definitely fill those up before the day before the storm. But it's one of those things. We need to be a- Yeah, Greg, actually have some gasoline in your garage for, for you guys. Yeah, right. Greg, have anything? Greg doesn't do anything for the house to have it prepared for anything. Propane at home, but I thought let's just get a couple of gas so we have them just in case. You never know. I'm sure we'll be fine. We're not. We just watched uh, Ryan Hall, y'all. He has uh, good updates on the what's the door making this. He has good updates for weather, and so he, you know, it's going to be storming. We're like south of Tampa, so we're more. I think it's Tampa and above. It's going to get hit. We'll get rain and all that. So if there's a power outage, at least we'll be safe. But we shouldn't have too long of a time it's out for. So I think that we should be good. So, this sweet little lady's getting a gas. All good, so we're gonna be done. There you go, big feel better? Huh? Feel better? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing everybody else is crying. No. <laughs> All right, we got gas. Uh, <sighs> I can see why people don't like Greg. Limited at 100. Okay. Yep, which is awesome. That's why they still have gas here. That's good. Home, real quick. We're gonna, I'm just gonna get a snack because I'm starving. A little plate of munchies. Okay, so. I told you 20 of these or 17 of these are 170 calories, Amy. You have two servings here. That means you have 340 calories just in nuts. This high sodium, this high sodium, this high cholesterol, this high fat. You are not doing your heart any favors, my dear. With everybody, we're gonna eat real quick. They're grabbing little things and then we'll keep continuing on. I'm gonna make a like a big mac and cheese. Look at her. Look at her with her food in the dirty sink with the dirty dishes. Unbelievable. When people come over here and they just splash up into their food. Ugh. I'm gonna bake it. It's gonna be the cute. So I'm just gonna spray my inside. Where's your bag for it? So it doesn't stick on the sides. You could do a little um, cover, like a bag and stuff, but I'm not going to. So I guess I'll just put my pasta. I cooked some pasta. So we're gonna put that in. That was gross. I'm, here, I'm gonna leave this in here for the day. I'm gathering for everything. I think this is probably a lot of cheese right there. I'm just looking, that's a lot of cheese. There, 
Yeah. That's not gathering fragments. You put the bag, you put the big bag of cheese into small bags, and you put them in the freezer. You put about ten of them in the freezer. That's not a fragment. That's just a pre-packed package of cheese. A little bit left over of cream cheese. That's a good way to make mac and cheese. And then we have nacho cheese from our tacos. I told you we would use all that up. So this here, yum, put it in leftover there. nacho cheese. Everybody yeah, does. I even had Alfredo sauce. I might put that in here, but let me just, this might be creamy enough. I think it's going to be creamy enough. Just kind of use it up. Mind you, she hasn't added any seasoning yet. Just stuff. I'll make a mac and cheese for Jensen so that he can have. Let me get some milk out. I'm using the lactate milk, not specifically because, oh, it's not, not because I need to make this lactose free, because it's not, because, but I only had a little bit of regular milk for some reason. They drank that whole entire jug. I was like, so I'll use this up because. She only bought one gallon of milk. How are six people supposed to have one gallon of milk? I have a lot of this. Let me use this right here. So let me just, this might be enough stuff right in there. I was going to add, I had a little bit of this. But I don't even think. Still no seasoning. I need to, because I feel like that's creamy. So I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this mixture. And then I'll just kind of heat it up on a low. That wasn't enough seasoning. That was like a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a, ta a teaspoon of salt. Let's see, select. And then... And she has at least a pound and a half to two pounds of pasta. Do a couple hours here. This should be good. If it gets like where it's absorbing all the liquid, then you want to add more milk. But this should be good. You know, a little trick, add some chicken bouillon to it. Just a little bit. Just like a tablespoon. It makes it delicious. So Can't forget about the good old sodium-filled chicken bouillon. Good, creamy mac and cheese. I'm thinking I'm, I added that little bit of uh, cream cheese in there. That should help it. So I'm just going to let this sit. And this will be done. I'm going to be using up things. So we'll I have in my freezer chicken nuggets right here. So I'm gonna use these, put these in the air fryer so I have to heat up the oven. And then this right here, perfect easy day for dinner. Just gather up fragments, we have all that sweet. Those are not fragments. Chicken nuggets are not fragments, Amy. You didn't never cook them, they're just processed food. And leave it to Amy to have a big pile of laundry, chicken nuggets, and macaroni and cheese. Way to go, Amy. You're mom of the year. Sour sauce, I figured I'd use this. I think I got some watermelon to eat up, so it'll be great. Kids are in the house, they're doing chores, getting things done. I said, today's hurricane preparedness day. <laughs> so that means that we do school four days a week. So usually it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This week we'll do. They don't even do school fi five days a week. Her kids are gonna be worthless by the time they're 18. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So more likely we'll be inside and it'll be raining, so it'll be a good time to do that. So today we're gonna focus on other things. So one of the things I'm gonna do is my freezer and refrigerators. We do have generators for these, but the I don't understand why you don't take that ugly bespoke refrigerator you bought back. It's a piece of crap. It's little, it's too little. Just put this out there and leave this in your garage. You don't need two refrigerators. You're about to empty this one completely anyway. You're just being lazy. Lazy, too lazy to go to the grocery store, too lazy to cook. You're always too lazy for everything. The least you have to open something, the better. So, so I'm gonna take out a couple meals that we can cook with our propane, before, you know. A couple meals. So she means chicken sandwiches, hamburgers, pizza, and chicken nuggets. Fire, we do pizza. Oh, and, and ramen. Oven, whatever. So I'm gonna take out like hamburgers, I think, and hamburger buns. Move these to the inside refrigerator freezer. These ones I'll keep as shut as possible. I have a bunch of milk in here and stuff, so that's my, I guess, as long as it's closed. So I just wanna organize it better. We have ice cream, ice cream. She has a bunch of milk. She means lactate milk because she cares about Jensen having milk. <laughs> if it's on the door, it's gonna get warmer faster, so I'm gonna put it more towards the back. So I'm gonna do a little bit of organizing of the freezers here. Okay, remember I had these? I forgot I had these out here. I'm gonna take these. Of course you forgot you had them because your kids don't want them. And then what I did down here is I took one of our waters that we have up here, I stuck one in there. So this will freeze solid, help keep this cool in the event that the power goes out for an extended period of time. We should be fine. But let's say it goes out for like two weeks or a week and a half and we don't have enough gas. That will help it a little bit longer. Shoved everything up here as best as I could. That's a good thing. So I think we're good here. I will have to go see what I got let me go see what I got in the house to know anything here. Did she just have those laying on the floor? I think that, like, I got wontons because wontons you There was so much junk in there, so much bread and corn dogs. You can fry up and use those with the um, ramen. That'll be really good. I got hamburgers. Kielbasa, I was going to do kielbasa tomorrow with. And I think over here, what do I got in here? I do have all of our milk. Milk and coffee creamer. So... She's got all that hummus she bought that they didn't eat. Is that it? Okay, so 
So this stuff is lunch meat, some eggs. I'll probably go replenish stuff in the refrigerator. And then that way this doesn't have to be cool. Like we can, we can still use it. I'll keep it on, but if power goes out, I would just unplug this and not use that. So let me. You don't even need it. That's what I was just saying. This stuff, all of the stuff from the other refrigerator, put it in here, take the other refrigerator back. It's ugly and it costs too much money. And put this puppy in your refrigerator, in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, Cause it's just milk and literally go put this in the kitchen. Let me go do that. Let me take my load of stuff in the house here. And I'll come back and get this. Perfect. Okay, good. So it's just right here. This can be plugged in. It's going to be great. So what I'm going to do is turn up my setting to the coldest. So it look at all this. It's all processed, all processed potatoes, all processed foods, all processed foods, all processed chicken. Like this whole freaking freezer is processed. It gets really, really frozen again. I'm gonna take this out. I think this is my last garbage bag snack mix. We they ate 22 gallons of that snack mix. 22 gallons. Sodium galore. Still has a half granola, that'll be okay here. Right here. They didn't eat them. They took them and then they would defrost and she would throw them away. So when you have this, I'll keep shut so that the next day the um, freezer can freeze all that water. Look how sweaty she is. About this one is on, but it's empty. I have potatoes and there's anything else. There's water in the bottom. She it's on, but it's empty, and then she complains about wasting electricity all the time. Cans of Coke and potatoes. I need to take a couple small ones here. I'm going to do a recipe. Well, I can just leave these out here. Tonight. I can just leave these. I will uh, do a couple recipes tomorrow with this. So, is that good? Okay. So, this is on for now, but... It's 2023, and she's running an entire refrigerator in her garage in the Florida heat for no reason. If we need to unplug that, we will. So, like, let's go inside and put that stuff in the refrigerator. For my refrigerators, I, the only thing I grabbed out was I had a pizza sauce and one banana. I'm going to go put that in the freezer. And I found one more cheese. I thought I had just a tiny, just a tiny little bit of cheese. I'm going to put that right in here. Because I'm batting up the fridge. So I'm going to It'll make its way in there. So this is good. Perfect. I'm going to take these out. It didn't need any more cheese. So we can eat those today. And she's not going to taste it and make sure the seasoning's right. Just put them out so they can be refrigerated because they like those. So our freezers, I feel like, are pretty. Who's over here eating snacks? Good. Okay, so they're outside there. They're gonna take it was Greg. Take the the wow and all the floaties and then deflate all of them. So everything is deflated and void of something to fly around the house. Okay, not doing any of this film. The kids are like, oh, it's preparing. I'm like, I know. So outside, the boys got the floaties all deflated. We put them on the side of the house. Now we're taking all of the chairs and stacking them. And then we're gonna lay them flat up against the um, fence because they're not gonna go anywhere. And the how do you know they're not gonna go anywhere? You don't. You, you don't know, Amy tables we're gonna flip upside down and we have like a bunch of bricks put on top of that yeah because they the uh, hurricane can't pick up bricks I'm gonna cover my smoker pizza oven and our like slushy and popcorn machine on here too we're gonna do that but i'm not showing you that because you're gonna leave the popcorn maker out there what if it lifts up and hits somebody's house we're just working out there together getting it done so what we did is we came out here and we covered all of our stuff so we've got our smoke your yard is a nightmare to to the people that were already in florida for and the grill and our table here all covered, brought this up here. So everything's covered and secured. What we did down here is put our floaties. We deflated them and they're down there with a pool cover. And then we put our chairs, stack them. Why didn't you put your pool cover on so that you wouldn't have a bunch of debris in your pool? I'm put up against the thing. I know people said you put them in your pool. I don't know, will those blow right there? I don't yeah, they're gonna blow. No, I'm hopeful, I feel like. Why don't you put them in the garage so that they don't go flying through somebody's window? It's heavy enough, it won't. All our chairs yeah, it's heavy enough it won't because it doesn't pick up roofs, Amy, right? Hurricanes don't knock people's houses over. Lie down and then um, some bricks on top. So we'll see how that does. Don't worry. They put the pool tools on top. It'll hold them down in 80 mile winds. Like an empty deck up here again. And then over there, we put the tables upside down with some bricks on top. So I think we're going to be good to go. Greg's over here. You left those glass things hanging in the, in the tree, though, so that they could shatter all over. Finishing up before the storm comes. This guy has been working on this for three months. It's about to be a hurricane, and he has bricks laid out all across their patio. I would be shitting these bricks if I were their neighbors. I can't even believe this. This guy's about to have a hurricane come through, and he's sitting here with tile pieces, cutting them with scissors. Yep, I just got this corner, this corner, that corner over there. To do? Yeah, and then I can, I'm gonna grout it real quick before everything gets here. Yes, because it's coming. It was just a minute ago, it was like really I dark, and I was like, <gasps> hurricane. I was like, so nice. It's so weird, because it's not gonna rain that much tonight. Yeah. But it is a little windy, so thank, awesome. Thank you for getting everything up. Uh, we got it. Well, the kids did. They did good picking everything up, so we'll. He said, thank you for getting everything done while I sit out here on my big fat butt cutting up glass. Let's see if the wind blows those over. I don't know. You let me know. We 
got to break down the plate. Yes, yeah, so it then, should be good. Yeah, before uh, before I come. You could just stick it in the pool so it can't like fly up and out. All of your f furniture, shove it down in the pool. We can't hear him when he's outside and the wind's blowing. He's too far from the camera. Stop filming this way. It's stupid. I love it. Yep, and then I'm going to have to get a couple chairs or something. And make Cover. Three chairs and make a tent Tarp. for my, yeah, for the generator. This dude's going to bring the generator outside during the storm, and then he's going to use three chairs and build a tarp cover for it. Greg, leave the generator in the house until after the storm and then once all the winds are done you bring it outside and not underneath the overhang and you start it up then duh that's a good thing yeah. Can we have box play or something so not to use? yes oh later honey he's going in yes honey, later we'll have to make sure you show your kid in her bathing suit we'll, uh, drag the generator out and make sure right, it starts it's all right working i love it okay. all right kids are in the pool swimming because so what we did is when i was cleaning up my freezer i've got these out remember <gasps> we I, they're kind of like this one, the, they were a little overflow. Don't overflow your jars. These are really, really good. The only person I didn't like is Jensen because he doesn't like watermelon. But I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Jensen doesn't like anything you make. Really, really good. So I've got a couple more in the refrigerator here of the jars. I put the plastic in, in the drawer and then the pickles were so good. This was the winner. Everybody loves them. Why do you keep making pickles? You have so many pickles. You buy pickles, you make pickles. Why? Greg's like, those are my favorite. And Jensen's like, those are my favorite. So these are the winner pickle recipes. So I'm going to definitely have to go. Pickles are not good for you. You can't just eat uh, endless pickles, Amy. Back and watch that video so I remember how to make a burn I'll probably do some more because we have more cucumbers in there. So, what else? So my house, all the chores are done. There is, the only thing to do is, um, I've got laundry, we're doing laundry. So I've got laundry in, so I think I've got a story pad. Boys clothes over there for them to put away. The boys are gonna do the room they didn't do yet. I pulled this out and this out because it has to get chopped. They look disgustingly rotten. If I do that today, awesome. If I do it tomorrow, it doesn't matter. So those are the only two things to do. My mac and cheese is good and done. Um, we'll do chicken nuggets here in a little bit. So it's like a good day. It's like a great day. The kids are going to swim for a while because they're hot. And I told them, well, then you come in and then we'll sit and do school. So we'll take a couple. It's the beauty of school. It's like. That cantaloupe looks like it is a century egg or it's about to hatch a dinosaur. How old is that cantaloupe? You, like I was thinking in my head. So this is my plan. I got up and was filming for you guys, talking about things, and then by the time I got down here, I was talking to Greg, we ran to the store. So by the time we get back, I was like, you know what, it's just stressing, because I knew we had to get stuff together and picked up for the hurricane preparedness. I um, decided, you know what, let's skip school. So I wouldn't even think to, so that's why you're nice, give yourself... There's no reason to skip school. You guys didn't even have that much to get ready. You had to go get gas. You just want to skip school because you don't want to do it. Up that window of like, not every day, so like I would only do four days, so now... I, in my head, I thought I could just do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and that'll work out that way. But we're actually going to have plenty of time today. So I'm going to, we're going to do some tonight because we can just do it usually. I like to be finished because we'll have the rest of the night, but I, we're going to pretty much be home. We're not going to go anywhere or do anything. Jaden went to Brooklyn for us, so we don't have to go. Wait, you sent your 18-year-old daughter who just learned to drive and just got her license out into a hurricane to pick up your 16-year-old daughter so that you and Greg wouldn't have to leave the house. Amy. You are the epitome of disgusting. You are not a mother. You are a freaking woman who gave birth to 10 kids that you didn't want because you do not take care of those children. You did not send an uneducated, unpracticed driver into a hurricane to get your child. You're crazy and you're disgusting. And I can't wait until it all falls apart for you. Well, so I'm like, let's the kids swim for a little bit. They'll come in, we'll sit down and do all of our schoolwork together. And that'll be a nice end to our evening. That, and I'll just have to edit. They're not going to do no schoolwork. Dinner is easy and done. And then we'll do, um, have it, yeah, go out and swim tonight. Well, it's nice because tomorrow, tomorrow will be the bad day. <laughs> tomorrow will be the rain day. So we'll get to see some rain, what it's like up close. So I don't know. I, I said, I have never lived through a hurricane, but I, I've had rain from the hurricanes up in the mountains. So, and the wind blows like crazy. So I, it'll be interesting to see what it does here. So I don't know, we get lots of messages, lots of um, like warnings, which is, which is good. It's like my phone, our HOA president sent us, or not president, the owner, the owner of our HOA, they sent an email out, let everybody know, they sent out a text message, let everybody know, told us, you know, we're not gonna do trash pickup and um, just different things. They're not gonna do trash pickup and they're changing everything, but Amy acts like this is nothing and her daughter could just go pop out and get her other daughter because it's not gonna be windy or rainy or wild out there or people driving crazy to like let you know stuff's coming and then we got that message on our phone you don't care that stuff's coming huh it's all an adventure for amy and so i'm like that's good lots of good warnings to be prepared you know don't stress out which there's no stressing there's like 
if we were on the coast, right on the coast, yeah, I'd be a little more concerned, but we're not at all. So we're just not in the our little area. We were looking at different um, hurricanes that have come through. The only ones, have, all the ones they've recorded in our area, there's never been anything that's come up. You know what is in your area? Tornadoes. Don't believe me? Look it up. In our area, it's like there's a little pocketed area of Florida on both sides that no hurricanes go through. So they don't know why. We were watching another weather person and he was saying that little area is like for some reason nothing even comes through there. So it never has. So I don't know if it's because of the way the ocean is, the way the land is, who knows what it is. So don't worry, the ocean's changing. We're fortunate we're in an area where we shouldn't see anything. I said, even we the kids that said, maybe flooding. I said, well, in reality, I said, look behind us. There's a building behind us. I said, look how low it is to the ground with us. I said, we're way higher than that. I said, all that water is going to have to rise up that high and then come our way. And that's, that's pretty high. We're a bunch of, I think we're 150 feet above sea level. Do you not know how fast flooding happens, Amy? It wouldn't just be a slow rise as you guys set up on your mountaintop. You're not even on a mountain. <laughs> I think we were 2,600 in the mountains, so we're not flat, we're not low, you know, we're not below, we're up, so we should be good. I think the only thing we didn't know was to keep our pool pump on. Someone said, um, I think Brooklyn's boss had said, if you guys got a pool, keep a pool pump on because we have a backflow, is that what? This lady, this lady bought a $650,000 house and is taking pool advice from Brooklyn's boss, some fast food or retail manager. Like, Amy, you have lost your mind. Get a pool guy to help you take care of that pool before it destroys your life. Have you ever seen an in-ground pool come out of the ground? Google it. It's called where if it fills up too full, it'll shoot out the water. I think that's what it is. So we have that. We have it at a pool pump. The pool pump, the power goes out. We have a um, X. We have a way we can siphon it out and get the water up to go lower behind us because we have low ground back there. So always we're going to be just fine. I got Maxine's water and food. We got emergency water. She got a bath today. So I'm like, okay, we'll be ready. I'll get up tomorrow and make. Yeah, because a bath. You can't go through a hurricane without a bath, Maxine. Food early so that it's done. Put in the crock pot just to be prepared. I'll do kielbasa, potatoes, and green beans. Easy. So it's done. And that way we have food. We don't have to worry about it. And then. Then we can kind of, like, kids will love ramen. They'll love the little dumplings. We can have those for Wednesday when it's coming through. So just different things to make my life easier, but if all the laundry's done. How does ramen and dumplings make your life any easier? Today is chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese, and you have pizza, and you have hamburgers. Like, your life is never hard, Amy. And if the house is clean, then it's not so bad. And I even told the kids, I said, make sure you get everything picked up, your rooms, you know, it's my, my like, like, get your rooms done, because you don't want to be trampling and touching things and falling in the dark. So, you know, because you know, they can't use the flashlights on their devices. So, just getting those things done, which is a good thing. Trying to scam them like you try to scam all your followers. And kind of the same preparations we'd have in the mountains. Just make sure you got all those things. Normally, I'd say fill up my tubs in that, but we have a whole entire pool. So I'm really not too worried about filling tubs up. I could. It's just more money. It's, we pay for our water. I know it would be pennies, but like mountains, we had a well. We really didn't pay for that at all. It just came out of the ground. But here we're going to pay for our water. So I'm like, we don't really need to fill up our tubs. We can literally go out to the pool and scoop out a bucket of water and dump it. We have a bucket. Thank goodness Greg was in the garage. He's like, ooh, we forgot we had buckets. I'm like, oh, we do have a bucket. So bucket, if we have to, to dump the, the pool water, to flush the toilets. And that'll be it. We, you know, if we had to boil some for a bath, we could do that too. But I was like, jump in the pool, kids. That's what I'm say. Go get your bath in the pool tonight. Come out. And How many times have you bathed in the pool, Amy? Because this is like at least the fourth time that you've talked about bathing in the pool and bathing your children in the pool. I honestly do not think that her and her children bathe regularly. I don't. I think they use the pool as, as um, an alternative to baths. Just like she uses unschooling as an alternative to actually teaching her children. Take your hair and scrub it. We'll rinse it with salt water. It'll be like at the ocean. <laughs> Can't do what you gotta do, people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go upstairs, pull footage off here because the kids are swimming, just so I can start getting my stuff ready to go, and then I'll edit, and then I'll come back and do school. Great Monday, great, great Monday. So, all right, let's. I'll see you in a minute. Hold on. Okay, it wasn't supposed to rain, but it started raining. Uh, How do you feel about that, babe? I was one corner away from being done. So he didn't finish. Of course he didn't finish. And then the hurricane came through, so he's not gonna finish it for another month. And then Amy, here are Amy's two young children. He's 11, and she is 12. And they are running in their bathing suits in the, in the storm. And Amy is recording them. Amy, just like I froze this right here, any pervert on the internet can pause this and get captions of your children in their bathing suits. Stop showing them. You are ruining them for the future. When these children grow up, these pictures and this will always be here. 
anything that these weirdos have taken off of the internet, their feet, pictures, pictures of them in their bathing suits, those are things they can never have removed. They are forever on the internet, and you did that to them. Oh, uh, my kids like run through the rain. They're like, yay, we can be in the rain. Hold on. Right. She gave all that time. I had to blur it and fast forward it because she gave weirdos all that time to clip those children and get a freeze frame of her children in their bathing suit. A little girl, a 12-year-old pre-adolescent girl. First, hur first hurricane rain, child's running through it. So what happened to my day? I got real busy <laughs> there. Um, did most of my filming stuff earlier and then I had a doing a phone call, talking to some family and getting that in. And then it was like, okay, I'm like, it's dinner time. So I cooked the chicken nuggets and then um, just pulled it off. She had to make sure she said she was talking to some family. Probably your dad begging for more money, Amy. I and I didn't even, I'm like, I'm not even filming what we're doing. So I edited part of today's. Look at that. That's her dinner. Macaroni and cheese. Horrible for a 50-year-old woman. Chicken nuggets and sweet peas. Lady, you are 50. I cannot believe it. Greg, how happy are you? I can't believe that a 50-year-old man would want to eat chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese for dinner. I, I won't believe that. Where is the real m meat and protein, right, Greg? Amy, you're about to lose your husband again if you feed him this crap every night. Because if I were your husband, I'd have been left. Video, there was a lot of footage. I was like, it was about a good hour just for the um, talking homeschooling. So I don't know, I guess I could have done two videos, but hopefully you just fast forwarded through all that if you didn't want to hear that part. So, And if not, who cares? Because it's my channel, not yours. It's been a good day. It's been a great day. We're ready. Everybody's here, and which is rare. We haven't all been home at the same time, so we're all downstairs. Because your young children have to go out and work full-time jobs, because I'm sure you charge rent, and because they have to feed themselves. Okay, we're watching a movie, eating dinner, and then um, it stopped raining. It's not raining anymore, so the weather is good right now, but we will uh, we'll see what their next couple days bring us. Now the kids, the girls have to go out. They still have to work tomorrow, so I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about it until like Wednesday or like Tuesday night, so I think we'll be good, but we're ready. We're prepared and ready, so we didn't get to any school. That was something I was going to do, and we did not do. Of course they didn't get to school because, you know, Amy has no priorities for her children. That's okay. That's the beauty of it. We can do that. Did she get a video made so that you could watch it and she could get paid? Of course. That tomorrow. So I went to go down and started doing with the kids and I was like, you know what? Let's just wait till tomorrow. It'll be, we'll be home. We might as well. We can get a whole lot more done. So they're not going to do it tomorrow either. That is what we're going to focus on tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Lots of chit chat and lots of stuff going on. Come back tomorrow and see how we hunker down and ride out this hurricane. I don't know. I'm going to have to ride it out. It's going to literally rain. That's all it's going to do. So come back and see all that. We'll share what it's doing here in our little tiny corner of Florida. So, all right. You have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you again tomorrow with another video. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. All right. Well, that was um, horribly disgusting, Amy. And I am really, really feeling sorry for those children. If you watched all the way through, I thank you for the view. And I will see you next time on the next video. I have um, a couple more to catch up to where Amy's at. And I feel like we will do it this weekend. So stay tuned. And I'll see you on the next one. Be there or be square. Have a great day, neighbors.